and take our country back. It's time to wake up America. Good morning, it's 7.03, I'm Austin Peterson. It's the Wake Up America show time and it's time to rise in freedom. Today's a very special today day because we're joined in studio by our good friend, Camelia Peterson. Hey, CJ. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks so much for coming in the studio today. Pleasure. Glad to have you here. All right, the American dream, quitting your job. Well, or getting fired. Washington Post reporters today uh, are very upset after video emerged of them complaining to their upper management about the hundreds of layoffs which are expected to come in the new year. I guess, CJ, they should just learn to code. Learn to code. Learn to code, yes. <laughs> Don't go looking for jobs at Twitter. That's just a suggestion. At 7.35 this morning, uh, Whoopi Goldberg on The View says that Republicans who voted for gay marriage were pressured to, maybe by a lover. To Lady Chatterley's lover. <laughs> okay. Even watching that. No. Yes. Okay. And at... Uh, Eight o'clock this morning. Why do you feel lonely during the holidays? CJ, you, you, you admitted today you feel a little a little lonely during the holidays. Well, I mean, yes and no. I have a little bit different perspective on it, so I don't come. Shut up, share it for later. Like, oh, share it for later. Okay. <laughs> morning. At 8.35 this morning, Sean Aranda helped me show by getting your message read on air. You can just head on over to YouTube at youtube.com slash AP4Liberty and drop us a super chat and we will read that live on air as long as it doesn't contain any profanity or any pro pro anything profane or say anything unkind about cj oh of course not cj how you doing today i'm doing good doing good well glad to have you on the program and in studio today um we i i picked this topic not just because of the story of the, of the washington post but also because you and i were having a conversation mm -hmm. last night about um you know how the pandemic really changed people's outlook on uh, employment and what they could do for themselves. You had a story that you were telling last night about people who had set up a you know a barbecue operation out in St. Louis. You want to share that with everybody? Sure. So I met a guy um, through some of the grassroots advocacy classes that we've been doing in St. Louis City, and he has a really neat story. Um, his family has owned a barbecue restaurant for you know probably almost thirty years, and here in the last year and a half or so. He uh, launched out on his own and has created his own line of barbecue sauces and dry rubs and all of those kind of things and has really made a go of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so one of the things we were talking about yesterday is whether how that affected their business during the pandemic. And he said that really, and we were talking about the labor shortage and people that were not coming back to work even after that extra unemployment was cut off. And he said a lot of his friends and people that he knew, it wasn't that they were just sitting on their laurels and collecting unemployment, but they were going out and working for themselves. They were, you know, starting to sell their own items and creations on Alibaba and drop shipping and, you know, starting their own, you know, hair businesses. And so people were going into business for themselves. And he thinks that that's a good chunk of it. Yeah, there were a lot lot of people that were going out on their own and trying experimenting with new things because you know you're you're home you're you know during the lockdown in some ways and, and you know you're thinking to yourself well what am I going to do with myself some people were you know sat around got fat and lazy and you know didn't do much but other people were like what can I do here from home and, and get right. more productive but you were saying that these these um, uh, people had set up this model during the pandemic of to go orders and and they decided to stick with it. Right. They had cut their hours. Um, you know, when everything was locked down so much, they had cut their hours from, I think, instead of like 11 a.m. to 10 p.m., mm -hmm. they cut it to 11 to 530 and they basically people called in their orders and, you know, they drove up to pick them up. And he said that that was so successful that they've just kept doing that. And in fact, it's it's actually they've been more successful in with that model. And I think that that, you know, really works for them, probably because of the style of their restaurant, what they offer and that they have a really good product. I mean, people it was in demand. I mean, barbecue for sure. You know, yeah. uh, that's always going to be in demand. Uh, if you're just tuning into the Wake Up America show with Austin Peterson, I'm joined in studio now by my friend Camelia Peterson. I switched over to our Twitter weirdness scene so we could take a, a gander at this video from Clay Travis. The Washington Post 
which has lost 500,000 subscribers in the last year, has announced layoffs are coming to the paper. Mm. The meeting didn't go well. Let's watch this and respond to it. We will have we'll have more information as we move forward. Thank you very much. And how will this position be decided? You seem to be disrespecting this. You seem to be disrespecting this forum. Uh, what are you going to do to protect people's jobs? The Washington Post announced more job cuts next year, a uh, season of layoffs throughout the media industry, and the paper will also eliminate its standalone magazine. I mean, it's almost like they should, you know, become competitive and actually give people a product that they want to buy. Oh, well, that's like, that wouldn't make any sense. But the, the thing is, is, Camille, is that the, these Washington Post reports, I like the the, the comment underneath the tweet that said that, that like, well, working these white women now, like, realize that their jobs are subject to capitalist uh, limitations. <laughs> yes. uh, if, they, they, if you took a vote in that room, like 70% of them would probably vote for communism. But but, uh, you know, the, the Washington Post is like, they call it the paper of record, I think. It's, you know, democracy dies in darkness. Now right? democracy dies in unemployment. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Very good. Uh, you can text the show today at 573-319-1586. We're talking about the job market a little bit this morning. Um, leaving the radio station was uh, terrifying for me. Yeah. I have to say I was scared. Um because success is never guaranteed. Um, and I'll tell you, at first I was kind of looking around for other jobs in the media. At first I was thinking to myself, sure. oh, maybe I'll go work for The Blaze or maybe I'll go do, the, do this and stuff like that. But like it, it's 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 tough out there everywhere. But then, you know, you, you got to ask yourself, you know, well, how much of a, you know, of a following do I really have? You know what I mean? It's not like, um, you know, Joe Rogan levels. It's not like, uh, you know, I don't have millions of followers or anything like that. But you ask yourself, do you have an, enough of a, a big of a, enough of a network that if you were to start something on your own, could you make it successful? Um, because what you realize is once you work in the radio industry for a few years, your bosses take a gigantic cut of what it is that you bring in as a talent. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of commercials, in terms of value, you get like a little tiny, tiny sliver, which, you know, it makes sense, right? If you're, if you're the boss, you, you know, you pay for all the equipment, you know, the microphones, you know, the video cameras or whatever it is that you do. Um, but, or, or, you know, Washington Post, you know, you got to pay for rent for the building that they all, that they all work in, et cetera, and their salaries. But the fact is, is that there's never been a better time to work for yourself than now. And uh, last night, uh, we, we talked about this. Um, I've been reading all these articles in the Wall Street Journal about how bosses, these, these corporations are complaining about how nobody wants to work and how they can't get enough people to come in or if they get people that they hire, they don't show up on the first day. And it used to be like that my attitude might have been like, oh, well, we, you know, we're losing our work ethic. You know, the Protestant work ethic that we're raised with here <laughs> in the state of Missouri. And, I, you know, I used to be maybe in my, you know, uh, younger days, I might have been like, yeah, well, you know, we, you know, people just don't have enough work ethic. Because what do you hear from your parents and grandparents when you raise it? Like, in my day, we worked all day until our fingers to the bone, you know, and stuff like that, which is fine. And I understand that. And, and I, I still appreciate the value of hard work, CJ. But these bosses are assholes who don't care about us. And they don't, they, we are disposable to them. Right. And, and I mean, I'm not just trying to come, you know, I'm not trying to look like I'm virtue signaling for the Washington Post people because those reporters are probably all assholes that I would despise. And, you know, I'm glad they're gone. But I'm, t but I mean, in general, uh, most people, like I read that story yesterday. I think I, I dropped it in there in the, um, uh, in what was it? Um, Oh, men without college degrees dropping mm -hmm. out of work because, uh, you know, it's better to not have a job than to have a job that are that is dead end for your social status. Right. Which I, I think is pretty interesting. But I mean, also, like, it, you know, your our wages are really going down in terms of real dollars. So we're, we're making less money. We're working harder than ever. Americans like the productivity curve for Americans has been a, on an upward trend since like this, the 60s. But we have not seen a corresponding rise in wages. Right. Well, and you know, I was telling you about my older daughter, Anna Rosa. She's uh, she's working 
at a big box store. Mm -hmm. And so she had been hired with the agreement that there was a certain day of the week that she would not work. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, here a few months in, they were like, oh, uh, you need to work this day. And she was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> And they said, okay, well, we're going to cut your hours by that. Well, she is able to do that because she still lives at home um, and she contributes to the household in a lot of other ways. And so she called their bluff and she was like, you know, I'm not going to do it. So do what you have to do. And so, and she's probably one of the most reliable, consistent people that they have. And so the problem is, is like, I'm sure there are a lot of people with no work ethic and they do, they show up late. They don't, you know, they don't do a good job. They loaf around, but they don't treat the people who are doing a great job well. And so they lose those people no, too. To those, especially those big box stores, you're just another cog in the machine, right? right? Like they, they'll go find another person who's going to push, you know, the widgets out there, you you know, and stand at the the checkout line and all that kind of stuff, and and, and you know these big corporations, it, for for so long they have gotten so massive, and they have done it on the backs of workers that they've just that I would say I'm not trying to sound like a communist here again, but like exploited to a large degree, right? That they you know have because they know that they have had power over their employees, they've been able to do whatever they want and say, walk all over people. But the, I think the pandemic really showed that people are not, they don't have to feel like they have to take it. Right. It was a while back that we were talking about um, how or read somewhere that the pandemic just kind of um, was the catalyst to speed up what was already coming. Mm -hmm. We were already headed this direction and that just made it faster. It, it, this conversation reminded me, you know, talking about the work ethic. Mm -hmm. My dad, when I was growing up, used to always say that he was the laziest man around because his goal, all he always worked for himself. I can only think of one time that he ever went and worked for um, a company, but he always said that, um, you know, he talked about working smarter, mm -hmm. not harder. And he was always looking for the creative, easier way to get something done. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. And that's, that's been my uh, mantra is that I, I'm lazy. So I work really hard so that I can be lazy, <laughs> Yeah, you know, cause like what I do is I, I find little tips and tricks, you know, and I'm not yeah. cutting corners, but what I'm doing is I'm setting myself up for my leisure time, right? I'm setting myself up so that I won't have to work hard. So for example, next, you know, next Thursday and Friday, I'm going to take Thursday and Friday off. Now, Friday, there won't be a show, but on Thursday, I'm going to do a replay, right? Mm. And so I'm going to, I'm what I'm going to do is this week, I'm going to put together a best of interviews and I'm going to get everything ready. So for Thursday, so that ahead of time, I can just boom, click play and everything, you know, goes out and is sort of automated. Not everybody can do that. I get that, especially working customer service. And like, there is a certain point of privilege that we have when we have these kind of like more, you know, uh, suburban, urban type of jobs, media jobs and things like that. So I'm not going to, you know, sit here and say, oh, well, just quit your job if you work mm -hmm. at a at a factory and you have you no know, other skills or something like that. But getting a side hustle might be the, the best thing that you do. Mm -hmm. the, the One of the smartest decisions that I ever made, uh, that I've ever made, and definitely one of the, the smartest decisions I made this year uh, by proxy, uh, was open up the AP for Liberty shop. Dude, so when I, like, as soon as, um, and I started it before I left uh, uh, Zimmer, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I was just like busted just to see how far I could go, and like, it was like gangbusters, and it kind of slowed down when I was like, you know, starting up the show and like doing all that, but it's been kind of like ramping back up, especially during the holidays, but this is one of those things where it's like, I've I've done a whole bunch of the work. Everything's set up. It's ready to go. The shop is open. People can go in anytime. By the way, we've got a discount if you use the code mistletoe. Um, but I make money when I sleep. Right. Right. And and so it's like you know people come in at midnight and I'll wake up and they'll be like, oh, I bought four taxation smells like theft candles or two trucker hats or things like that. And these are things that you can do that, you know, are going to take a lot of work front loading, but then they can become essentially like a residual income in the long term. So it's like, you know, thinking outside the box, there's never been like a better opportunity to now than I think now than to get out there and sure. to try something else. And all those social media influencers, that's what they're doing. Yes, they are. All right. We're going to go um, to commercial break. We'll continue this discussion when we get back. Oh, by the way, have you noticed something about uh, Camellia today? If you take a look at her in the camera. Uh -oh. Doesn't she look more clean and pretty and beautiful? Not just because she's hygienic, but because the camera just makes her look so much prettier. The coloring is so much warmer. I love it. Yes, the coloring is so much warmer. She looks so much clearer and cleaner. There's no fog. There's no haze. It's not grainy. Wait, do I have a filter? No. <laughs> 
No, we don't have a filter here on this show. No filters here. We'll be back with more on the Wake Up America show at wakeupamericashow.com. shooting things. But whenever I can't shoot something, I like to cut things. My life isn't all about shooting and stabbing and cutting, though. Sometimes I have to do actual work. But when I work, I still like to have fun. And there's nothing less fun than trying to cut with a crappy knife. Thankfully, from the ancient sect of Christian knights, who also loved cutting and stabbing, comes a new implement that has received my personal blessing. The Templar knife. Like the ancient sword of Excalibur, you don't choose a Templar knife, it chooses you. You just decide what kind you want on the website first, however, and then order it online, and then it chooses you. The Templar knife comes in a variety of shapes. As a man of culture and taste, I have decided I will never use a terrible knife again. And thanks to the inspiration provided by this excellent product, I have decided to launch a new crusade against anyone using less than superior knives. Join me, brothers and sisters, by visiting uppercuttactical.com slash pages slash Templar dash knives. That's a lot of slashes. For that, you'll need a Templar knife. For 10% off, use code AP for Liberty and join me in a quest for glory, for liberty, for Christendom, for the Templar knife. Get yours today. Fire. Your printing company stinks. They charge you too much money and they don't love America enough. We've got the solution. Patriot Printing USA. Whether you're running for office, saving souls, or just need business cards that will get you the new job you've been looking for, Patriot Printing USA has got you covered with the best prices around. Palm cards, brochures, bumper stickers, door hangers, you name it, we've got it. PatriotPrintingUSA.com. That's PatriotPrintingUSA.com. Want an engaging website to boost your business? You're just a click away from five-star Fiverr talent. Hundreds of freelancer skills like web design. Head to Fiverr.com today and get something started. foster care i never knew when i would have to move so i always had my suitcase ready to go then one day i was adopted my new parents opened their hearts and home to me my parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning my parents take me on trips i never thought i would go on they gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase my parents aren't perfect but they're perfect for me Settle these matters in the courts. 
than on the streets, and new laws are needed at every level. But law alone cannot make men see right. Good morning, Rise and Freedom. It's 723. You're watching and listening to the Wake Up America show at wakeupamericashow.com. We're still joined in the studio by my good friend, Camelia Peterson. Good morning, CJ. Nice to see you there. I saw our friend Miss Cadillac over on the live stream this morning was saying, did I miss the Washington Post reporters crying? I was like, oh, we, we, we. I tell you what, just for you, Miss Cadillac, because it's Christmas time. Don't say I never did anything for you. On Christmas, please, sir, can I have some more Washington Post report just crying? <laughs> of course you can. Let's. It's hard, kind of hard to hear it because it's uh, like a video that was recorded in the back. But like, try and listen. Like, like, tune your ears in. Here we go. Oh no, hold on. It's like the audio is uh, the audio is paused there. Hold on, let me get it for you guys so that you can so that you can hear it. I've got to take it out of the studio mode. Chrome audio, Clay Travis on Twitter. There we go. Boom. Now you might actually have a chance of hearing it. That's not a grievance session. It's questions. We will have we'll have more information as we move forward. Thank you very much. I, I retweeted that today with uh, that gif of uh, Tim Curry from Home Alone 2. I don't know if you've ever, of course, you, have, you haven't seen Home Alone 2, have you? I think so. Austin, New York? Ago. Yeah. Okay, you have, so you have seen Home Alone 1, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, for the, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, Chris Morrill made a really good uh, point to, on the live stream. He says if Elon had owned owned the post, he'd be getting pilloried for this. Oh, well, I know. Good point. I mean, yeah, we're trimming the fat everywhere. And the Washington Post is like, well, you know, it's time. <laughs> Can you imagine, though, having to do that in a room full of uh, reporters and uh, journalist oh i know <laughs> you know it's coming oh i know i know but the but the funniest one was the lady at the very end hold on you know let's go back there let's let's delight in their misery for just a moment we let's enjoy a little bit of shot for the lady at the very end let's see, see listen to this we will have we'll have more information as we move forward thank you very much that lady right there, right? That lady right there. You you seem to be disrespecting this forum. Like this, you just know it's this old, like batty, like Washington Post reporter, stuff like that. Probably like reports on TikTok trends, and you know, she like doesn't even have one or something like that. But uh yeah, uh wah, wah, wah. didn't they just write 33,985 articles about Elon firing and laying people off? Oh, oh that's a good point. Good point. Didn't CNN lay off a bunch of people too? Says Miss Cadillac. Yes. This is not a grievance session. This is not a grievance. We're not gonna allow this to turn into a grievance session. Oh, it's like you seem to be disrespecting the forum. They're laying off all these Washington Post reporters. Good, good. This is, I, I'm, I'm really on the Michael Malice train with this, where I think these people are the enemy of the people. They. It used to be that reporters and journalists, to some extent spoke were, were their job was to speak truth to power now the only ones who do they don't get gain access to power it you know right. glenn greenwald is a good example yes so can we think of and I'd, I'd, I'd encourage you to name in the chat and send us a text 573-319-1586 who are the real reporters who are speaking truth to power these days uh let's hear from you it could you know other than glenn greenwald camilla who can you think of Journalists who actually speak truth to power rather than be a mouthpiece for the regime as the Washington Post and many so others many are. many of them have gone off on their own. 
because they've gotten yeah. in trouble for they've saying gone the wrong thing mm -hmm. and they're out of there. And I mean, justifiably so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you name somebody that you actually trust as a reporter? I'd love to hear from you on this one again, 573-319-1586 is the text line that you can send us in. Um, what do we else we got coming up on the show? Okay. Oh, I've got a clip from The View of Whoopi Goldberg uh, accusing <laughs> Republicans of voting for the ones who voted for gay marriage were pressured to by their lovers. Oh. <laughs> really? We had one Republican in Missouri who voted for it in Congress. Do you know who it is? And oh, was it Ann Wagner? No, 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 it wasn't Ann Wagner. Who was it? Trying to remember now. Two hours later. <laughs> I guess we're just gonna have to wait until we come back and find out. Sorry. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll think really hard. I know who this is. Yes. Good morning to the sheer audacity over there who just joined us on Twitch. Glad to have you here. Merry Christmas. Hope you're having a happy holiday season. You're watching the Wake Up America Show. We'll be back with more at wakeupamericashow.com. Dance, Camelia. Dance, dance, dance now. Dance, monkey, dance. Want an engaging website to boost your business? You're just a click away from five-star Fiverr talent. Hundreds of freelancer skills like web design. Head to Fiverr.com today and get something started. American conservatism is distinct, like America is distinct from the United Kingdom. American conservatism's roots comes out of the Wild West, out of pioneerism. The difference between American conservatives and European conservatives is that Americans are cowboys. We are that God, guns, gold, and girls. It's wild here. And we should stay that way. We shouldn't allow a European version of conservatism to come and infect us here. We like it wide open spaces here, you know, deep in the heart of Texas and all that. with Austin Peterson. This show has been a huge venture for our family, so we would love it if you could join us. I believe in liberty, and I believe in Austin's ability to spread the ideas of liberty. Do you? I want to ask you today to join Peterson's Patriots with a pledge of $17.76 a month. Help us to stay cancel-proof so we can spread the message of limited government across the country. I joined Peterson's Patriots myself, just in a little different way. Visit wakeupamericashow.com slash support and make your pledge today. Hey, it's Austin. Thanks for watching and listening to the Wake Up America Show. 2022 has been an exciting year for the Peterson household. Steffi and I celebrated our first anniversary and my new radio program, The Austin Peterson Show, was syndicated in St. Louis just over a month ago. There have been some challenging times, but with the help and support of good friends like you, we've been able to come out even stronger at the end of this year than when we started. I wanted to take a moment to say thank you to the Cantina crew, especially Camelia Peterson, Tolly Owens, Jamie Marie Pope, Chris Morrill, Matt Unruh, Quest Fanning, Elizabeth with Fanning Press, Tina Martin Goodrick, John Rail, Jasper Logan, Kathy Jo Loy, Edie Vogel, Grant Sundberg, Anna DePalm, Doug Hill, Andy o Happy Holidays, Merry Christmas, and may your days be merry and bright with a happy new year. Hello. 
I'm George. Thank you for watching the Wake Up America show with my dad. Today, I'd like to share with you three reasons why you should visit dad's online store at apforlibertyshop.com. Number one, you can get exclusive freedom-loving merch designed by AP himself. Oh, me mom, Steffi. Liberty Laura has made some designs as well, and blimey, they are great. Number two, most of these products are so wicked that they aren't even allowed to be advertised on Facebook or Instagram. Modern machine guns and a proper keychain. Plus, our Grover Cleveland t-shirt is so spicy, apparently, that leftists on Facebook specifically banned it from appearing on the website. Number three, you're supporting liberty lovers just like you. Spend your money where you earn it, and you help me pops build a community that supports what you believe. Bloody hell, this commercial is running too long. Gotta run. Bye now. Don't forget to visit apforlibertyshop.com. That's apforlibertyshop.com. We're back. Hi, Camelia. <laughs> You're on camera. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? Nice to see everyone Great. today. Good. Glad you're here. Me too. Welcome to the studio in person. Thank you. I'm Austin Peterson. You're watching the Wake Up America show at wakeupamericashow.com. Actually, you're probably watching it on YouTube, but I just like to say the website a lot so that you'll actually visit it. <laughs> uh, it's revamped. It's new. I've got a whole bunch of new colors and all kinds of stuff. The archives are always there. And sometimes we have internet problems here. It's just what it is. And when that happens, if you're like, but I still want to see the show, sometimes YouTube will just be like, no, we're not going to work today. So if you want to watch the show, you can always see it at the website, wakeupamericashow.com. And of course, if we ever get banned or censored or shut down or anything, um, then that's the place to go. And the little shorts are really cool too. I like oh, you those. like those? Yeah. Yeah, I've been making these little... Uh, one minute little clips. I wonder if I can pull one up here. Let's see. Let's head over to our Twitter weirdness scene. I'll do it over there. Your channel. All right. Yes, I can actually. All right. I don't know. Yeah, we're on our Twitter weirdness. All right. Let's watch the one with Sarah. This one really got some heat. Yeah, I like that one. Oof. Hello, Austin. I don't know if it's going to work. The audio is a little messed up. This is what you get when you just like fly by the seat. One of our answer. listeners did send it in and asked, does Sarah have any regrets? No. I mean, I don't have any regrets at this point in time. Absolutely not. And that's not even a question. Um, yeah, I am fully happy with my transition at this point in time. Um, It scares me to see some people come out seven, eight years later, though. I don't think I was manipulated into anything, but it's like it's seven, year, eight years down the road, could I possibly feel differently? At this point in time, I don't think so. I think I, I but it's a possibility. Jeez, that one kind of like stuck with me, that moment when I was talking. That's Sarah Higdon, if you don't know. we were. I asked her if... Um, she might regret have regrets about uh transitioning and she, you know she said no pretty quickly at first but then the um then she's like but it scares me to see these people uh you know coming out right. eight years later and doing it like we were we were, without getting into too much graphic details detransitioning it i think is like mm. it's worse than transitioning oh yeah in my mind yeah the horror stories you hear are mm -hmm. it's terrible mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I really appreciated her honesty in admitting that. If you're just tuning in the Wake Up America show with Austin Peterson, um, you can text us today for free at 
319-1586. You can also do a super chat, and a super chat is a great way to support the show uh, by making a small donation. It is Christmas after all, sir. <laughs> uh, and of course, you know, you can visit our ca our sponsor, Lear Capital, at learaustin.com for all your gold and silver needs. Silver and gold, silver and gold. I don't want to get a content strike, so I want to sing that, but too much. Uh, Brandon Meyer over in the live stream says that uh, video shorts, I thought Austin was making Hooter style shorts with Liberty across the butt. I was going to run and get my credit card. We do have some kind of like some of that on the side. Some of that at APForLibertyShop.com. There's like, we've got some like candy cane leggings. You can get those for 15% off right now, actually, by typing in mistletoe. And the, is it Mises that's on the bikini? Yes, okay. we've sold those. We sold the Ludwig von Mises bikinis. No kidding. Um, and we probably need to make some "Don't Tread on Me" bikinis. We have one uh, uh, flag that we have is a giant flag that has like the gas and snake on it, but it says uh, "Fuck around and find out." And believe it or not, we have people who are buying the "Fuck around and find out" flags. I believe it. <laughs> All right, we've got uh, we've got another clip for you here. This time it's from the View. Let's uh, watch this and take a listen. Legal. I never knew it was gay marriage is well, legal. No, yeah. it wasn't legal it wasn't. until 1964. It was, yeah, it was loving even federalized. You know, yeah, it was no, never federal. Country, yeah. Now it's so federalized. does that mean that these Republicans who are against the gay marriage bill are also against interracial well, marriage? That's, I, that's, I, that's, that's a bad like policy the, the to get reelected. I, I oh, doubt no. that is. No, fear. it's not that. It's the fear of like polyamory or like you're going to marry a. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. Is that what it is? I mean, I think that must be the slippery slope. Bestiality. What they're thinking. The biggest threat. The biggest threat to straight marriage. Is straight couples. Like, well, that's yeah, the big, that's, that's, the hardest that's, thing. The, that's the biggest threat. Right. And anytime somebody decides that they want to get married, celebrate them. Yeah. Celebrate yeah. them. Yeah. Don't tell them that they're. It's like Jim Crow laws <laughs> voting for that. Because you're giving the finger to lots of married couples. And I suspect many of these folks voted the way they did because somebody they know said, if you don't vote this way, I'll never speak to you again. Perhaps a lover, maybe a friend. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> now that's like the worst thing that you can say to a Republican is that the reason that they voted the you know Roy Blunt <laughs> you, can you, you think Roy Blunt's got a lover? <laughs> a secret gay lover. I want to know. I don't think so. I, I don't want to know to be quite honest. But the Republican who voted for uh, gay marriage, uh, the only Republican in Missouri that voted for gay marriage was uh, was Ann Wagner. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I remember back when uh, it was earlier in the the summer that I remember hearing some feedback from some of the uh, Republican and grassroots groups mm -hmm. that were unhappy with her at the time for her vote then. I mean, there was like, <laughs> there was a woman that was like, if you're looking for her sign out there in front of the, wherever they, the, her campaign sign, she was like, I took it down and laid it down flat on the ground. Why? What they is were it? Unhappy with what her. is it about the gay marriage that gets them so upset? I mean, like, it's, there's so many other important issues. Like, they get as mad, as mad about gay marriage as they do about killing babies, right? And like, I'm pro life, right? But I'm also, you know, pro gay marriage. And it's like, you are getting as like angry, it's like as incensed as making it as big an issue as like the actual killing of children, right? Like, like lighten up, you know what I mean? Like it's Christmas time, you know, let people get married, you know, gay people have every right to be just as miserable as the rest of us. <laughs> 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 and record for marriage is not going very well. Yeah. But did you see that Vicky Hartzler cried? Yeah, I did. did she she did. cried. Tell this story. Tell this story. Well, I mean, I don't know the full context of what was going on with that. But yeah, she was she was not happy and she got teary, you know, talking about it. But here's the thing, you know, people about gay marriage getting about, legalized. Yes. She was like gay. crying about it. <laughs> you know, I saw <laughs> <laughs> that this morning. I know that, you know, the people that are upset about it also think that this is kind of the tearing, we're tearing down kind of the, the moral foundation of our culture and society. And this is the degradation that, you know, we keep seeing going on. But I keep thinking, you know, if you want to, to go back to, and there's this national conservatism movement mm -hmm. that wants to go back to sort of these theocratic, well, there's not even theocratic roots, but sort of a theocracy. Mm -hmm. 
we did the major moral majority years, mm -hmm. and it didn't work. The 1980s. Well, it, uh, not just that it didn't work, but it, it 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 didn't work because they would conflate, 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 conflate. And you know, and you know, on the, on their side of things, you know, when they talk about the slippery slope, like what's going on with like groomers and like you know kids in school sure. and the LGBT, the queer agenda, and all that stuff. I think, you know, they have a point when it comes right. to that. And I it's, agree. it's like with when the conservatives are fighting against groomers and drag queen story hours and when they're doing that, then I'm with them, right? But when they're standing – Yeah, there's standing a huge adult, difference though. Right. There is because, you know, the thing is, is, again, they conflate. They conflate. It's like, you know, gay marriage is not, you know, the cause of, of – pedos trying to get access to your kids you know pedos were trying to get access to your kids far before there was ever you know gay marriage right, right. And, there's a big difference between protecting children from harm mm -hmm. and letting adults do whatever the heck they want to do right right uh if you're just tuning in the wake up america show with austin peterson you can send us a text today at 573-319-1586 that's 573-319-1586 one five eight six you can also send us a super chat if you're over there watching us live on youtube and it's your first time today make sure that you click like subscribe and hit that bell notification icon so that you can get a notification whenever we're live in the morning kenneth slayer says the disrespect for marriage act is merely and only for the targeting of all traditions to eradicate all traditional values well see the problem with like the whole like traditional values thing is like how far back do your traditions go right uh you know, my traditions maybe go back a little bit further than yours right when people are like polyamory it's like well polygamy is a traditional value the, the, the most traditional form of marriage is polygamy uh well if you're going back a ways yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. so you know if you want to go if you want to play that route the problem is, is and and, the, and and what annoys me too about conservatives is that they will they they they, they want they assume everyone else shares their values and everyone else should share their values but but and they also they when they talk about our culture that's not my culture right you know i was raised in a in a certain type of a culture and then i went and i lived in another type of a culture and now i have my own type of a culture and certain cultures i enjoy but i don't really fit in with anybody's culture to be quite honest i don't fit in anybody's box i don't even i don't fit in with libertarian culture right that's for sure i got booed for you know not selling heroin to five year olds because 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 cu culture is conformity to a certain extent right right and if it's enforced then it's terrible if you if your culture cannot survive on its own without some kind of an enforced conformity, your culture fucking sucks. That's the bottom line for me is that if you have to rely on the government mm -hmm. to uh, ensure that you have a certain, you know, moral, cultural standard in your society, you're already in trouble. Yeah. And maybe your culture deserves to die then. That's and not I would, the government's I, job. Yeah. It's not the government's job to ensure culture, right? You know, the, you might say a culture of freedom that comes from the Bill of Rights. But everything else is supposed to be left to our, to our own devices and our own our own desire to, to choose. We are supposed to be free to choose. Right. I want to hang out in this culture for a little while. All right, I'm going to go to Japan in the spring. I'm going to hang out with that culture for a little while. But like, am I going to be you know Japanese? No, right. It, and so you know, a con the problem is is that uh, so it's like the other day our buddy Will Perry, who's watching the other, you know, I'm going to give you a hard time, Will, even though he's he's a supporter. we love Will, we love you, Will. <laughs> he's like he's like we you know. What did he say about me? He's like, you say Merry Christmas or something oh, like that. Happy holidays. Yeah, yeah. He's like, don't say happy holidays, Merry Christmas. And it's like, I, I kind of like, I want to joke and be like, you know, we say happy Hanukkah, right? And Hanukkah comes before Christmas. And it's like, this is, you know, uh, you know, what is it? What's, what do they call, what do the Jews call God? Oh, uh, well, like, well, usually Yashem. they don't even say it. Yashem. Like, it's Hashem. It's Hashem. Hashem. Yeah. 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 Exactly. It's like, uh, Hashem is a reason for the season, right? That's the thing that I really love about the Jews, uh, like as opposed to the Christians, is that the Jews are not like going around demanding that you say Happy Hanukkah, right? The Jews just want to leave your ass alone. You're not driving around in Missouri, rural Missouri with some big ass billboard telling you, you know, God sent you to hell, right? There's no, there's no, you know, like Jew God is sending you to hell and all that kind of stuff. It's Jews want, they don't even want you to be a part of their religion. I, I respect that. You know, they don't, you know, you got to go, if you want to join the Jewish religion, they're like, no, stay out. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? That's not very inclusive of them. Not, I know, I know. I respect that. I respect that big time. It's like, you know, I wouldn't want to be a part of any club that would have me as a member. <laughs> 
And you know what? When I wish somebody happy holidays, yeah. we have New Year's coming up too. I'm just like, I'm including everything. Exactly. Well, I, I like to joke because I go, I like to say that, uh, you know, I celebrate all the holidays because I like to party. Boy, that just makes people mad to know. And it's like my culture, it's our culture and all that kind of stuff. It's like, you have such a collectivist mindset. Like, I get it. You're part of a group. Right. But I mean, not everybody has to be part of your group. And like, well, I, and I know they hate this word, word pluralism. I love it. I love that America is so diverse in terms of culture, in terms of, uh, you know, what you can experience uh, it, here in the United States. Right. It's, it's different everywhere. Right. That's why it bothers me when you talk about the subject of immigration, where people come in, they're like, you have to like, mm -hmm. you have to become homogenous. You, mm -hmm. you have to become American. Well, American is the diversity of all of the, the different cultures from the immigrants who came in. That's what makes us so unique in the world. We get the best. We get yes. the best of everything. It's like these these immigrants who come over from from other countries. They come here to the United States and they 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 like they they become better Americans than people who were born here. These fat, lazy American slobs. It's like that that's like this whole like you know the whole birthright citizenship i almost am like starship troopers where it's like service guarantee citizenship like you you should have like it's almost like something that should be earned not like a birthright you know what i mean because it's like to cer to a certain extent people take advantage of it and they don't appreciate it like the like the like what it means to be an american mm -hmm. like it's like oh well you know you're american by birth and all that kind of stuff there's like well, you're not special because of the location of your mother's uterus on the day that you plopped forth. Right. You know what I mean? You, yeah. You know, I, I'm a pure mer meritocrat. You know, I believe that, I don't know if that's a word, but I believe that you are special because of what you do, not because of where you were born, right? Mm -hmm. And so like the, the problem with like the kind of nationalism that has like been engendered in the United States is that like, you're special just because you're an American. It's like, no, there are plenty of Americans who are in gigantic, you know, pieces of dog poop, right? And there are plenty of foreigners who come here who are way better than the people who were born here and they don't live on welfare. The, the majority of, of people who are on welfare in the United States are native borns. Mm -hmm. mm. Can't say that though. <laughs> yeah, I guess not. All right, uh, what do we got next? Let's see on the rundown. Boy, we really went off a tangent there. That was not on the list. No, it was not. The most popular Christmas movies in Kansas and Missouri. When we get back on the Wake Up America show at wakeupamericashow.com. Dance, damn it. Dance, Familia. Dance. Let's see it. There we go. Come on. That was terrible. <laughs> terrible. Uh, lame. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Are you exposed to hazardous materials while serving in the military? and have an illness or condition as a result. If so, you may be eligible for VA benefits and services. Whether you need health care or want to file a disability compensation claim related to military exposures, VA is here to help. Visit va.gov forward slash military dash exposures to learn more and apply today. <laughs> There wasn't going to be somebody who was a fiery champion of liberty, somebody who would who would get out there and who would be aggressive. And if they wouldn't do it with more fire or passion than I had, then I would go and I would fight this battle for us. I fought for the principles that we all share. Parties tend to be secondary to me. We're here because we believe in the principles of liberty. I am not a perfect messenger, but I think I'm a damn good one. This is a replica of our first president's flintlock pistol. You have my full support, my respect, and my gun. I think that, that the heart of my philosophy is much more libertarianism than, uh, than uh, well, that's the fashionable word these days, I guess. Liber a conservative is no longer just that. He's a libertarian and always has been. Yet any time you and I question the schemes of the do-gooders, we're denounced as being against their humanitarian goals. They say we're always against things. We're never for anything.
is fascism. Fascism is private ownership, private enterprise, but total government control and regulation. Well, the trouble with our liberal friends is not that they're ignorant. It's just that they know so much that isn't so. We lose freedom here. There's no place to escape to. This is the last stand on earth. This is the issue of this election. Whether we believe in our capacity for self-government or whether we abandon the American Revolution and confess that a little intellectual elite in a far distant capital can plan our lives for us better than we can plan them ourselves. Conservative, so-called, is the one that says, less government, get off my back, get out of my pocket, and let me have more control of my own destiny. on the other end to respond. What if there was no 911? You can be a part of the solution. Anybody can be a firefighter. Male, female, younger, older. We are school teachers. We are leaders in business. It's me, you, anyone that wants to be. There is no typical firefighter. We wish you a freedom Christmas. We wish you a freedom Christmas. We wish you a freedom Christmas and a liberty new year. Socialists and commies may try to convince you that the holiday is all about free stuff. But let's be honest. We all know whose wallet Santa's gifts are coming out of. There ain't no such thing as a free stocking. <laughs> Santa is the only guy with a big white beard promising free stuff that we want anything to do with this holiday. And if you don't believe, you don't receive. It's a capitalist consumerist holiday and it's time for a Santa-sized stimulus. Get your free market merch at the AP for Liberty shop today and stuff your socialist sister's stockings full of capitalist cheer. Ho, 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 ho. Why is your face so red? Why are you? I don't know. Whenever you're, we're coming back and like. You can pretty much guess live. when you see when you see that your face is down there on the television set. Hold on, let me show you. You can kind of see down here. Okay. We got the monitor down there. We kind of see. Oh, we yeah. can see this live. I legit like so. I don't very often really like beat red, blush, flush anymore, but. The other day I had a legit, like my face got hot and I was like, oh, I gotta be like the color of a beat because- What was it? I was meeting with a couple of, of our state representatives and I was talking with one of them the other one walked in and uh, shook my hand, sat down. He said, I see you got your dryer working. And I was like, oh no, he was reading my Twitter. <laughs> So he was seeing me gripe about the appliance shop guy. That's the <laughs> patriarchy. That's the thing about like oversharing on Twitter, especially when you work in politics, is that like you'll run into these like political types and stuff like that and like their suit and ties. And then it'll be like, you know, they'll like bring up your your laundry or whatever it is that you tweeted about or something like that. It's like my buddy Will Scharf keeps doing this where it's like I'll post something pretty controversial, you know, uh, like the other day I posted that poll about uh, should should we ban uh, altering the genitals of you know anyone under the age of 18 mm -hmm. until they're 18 uh you know for you know any reason whatsoever but i mean like you know obviously i would say like give it you know if it's some actual like medical disease right. or something like that <laughs> or whatever but um most people said yes because they immediately just thought oh well he's talking about transgenders right but that because will is jewish 
Will was in and Will is not stupid. He's like, no, he's not. He's like, so you're an ant intactivist, I guess, and all this stuff. He's talking about like, uh, the future attorney general of the state of Missouri is calling me an intactivist, and he's a Jewish man, and I'm gonna get in big trouble. So I hope he listens to the early part of this where I was praising the Jews at the expense of the Christians, you know. <laughs> Oh, God. Welcome to the Wake Up America show with Austin Peterson. We're in studio here with Camelia Peterson, and we're, just, we're basically just screwing around and, like, I'm having a good time because it's fun to not have to, like, uh, you know, write the the show and, uh, you know, I can just do stupid stuff, what? you know. Okay. I'm so sorry, everyone. <laughs> you can blame me. This is not a Christmas song. All right. What were we, we going to talk about? The movies. Oh, yeah. The movies. Who cares? Okay. I mean, like, I'm a bad person to talk about movies with, but I actually you have watched, seen a couple of these. So You saw Elf for the first time this week. I saw Elf for the first time this week. The girls and I watched it, mm -hmm. and I don't know that it's something I would watch mm -hmm. again, but it was enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, I laughed. Uh, Might have, like, teared up once or twice. Shh. <laughs> I really can't stay, baby. It's cold outside. Um, we're gonna skip this commercial break just because we've had too many commercials this morning. So, um, the uh, uh, what were we gonna talk about? Oh, like being lonely for the holidays. Hmm. Um, you say uh, that uh, for you, it's it's kind of always been kind of different. Like you say, you do feel lonely for the holidays, even though you were in a cult that didn't celebrate holidays. Well. I don't know that I, uh, I, I guess I didn't mean to say that I feel lonely for the holidays. It's just, it's a little different. I didn't grow up, for those who don't know, um, I did not grow up celebrating Christmas. She didn't grow up either. <laughs> no, that's true too. <laughs> hey, I'm actually, you know, I'm good with that one. <laughs> Adults get more, get a little boring, but uh, anyway, yes. but no, I, so you know, the girls and I really didn't start um, celebrating Christmas. They kind of started wanting to, it wasn't a big deal to me because I, it's not, it wasn't my tradition, mm -hmm. you know, and that was, I will say that was one of the things that growing up that there was always kind of um, something missing there. And I think it was that tradition, regardless of how people interpret, interpret um, Christmas as far as, you know, the religious aspects of it or not, or they just like the, the pretty things and the, the traditions that go with it. I see the value in that a lot. And we didn't do that. So the girls and I have been doing this the last couple of years and um, it's, it is, I can understand why this is a difficult time for people this time of the year, because it is a time. It's kind of like, like, like Thanksgiving was for us. Thanksgiving was our big holiday. It was when we would get together as a family. Um, my mother's extended family, we would always get together. It was a big deal. And I miss a lot of that now that everybody's kind of gone their their own way on things. So people who don't have the that support and family um, to be with during that time, that's that's hard. Christmas is kind of like a time of ghosts, if you will. Like I, I feel like as I've gotten older, you know, more and more ghosts around mm. me in in a sense. Um, because you know there's you know all of the people that you loved that you spent christmas with right right that aren't there and again there's like there's like a hollow mm -hmm. like a like an empty spot where they were and and so for me when i when i think about how i feel during the holidays like what when i feel like lonely it's not because i don't have people that are here and live and in the flesh who care sure. for me and love love me but i think th there's something magical about christmas as a child Mm -hmm. And when I was a young boy, we pretty much had like the most magical Christmas that you could have surrounded by our, my parents who loved me, my, my brother who was there. And we always had good Christmases, always had good gifts. And, um, my grandparents who I miss so much, who loved us so dearly were, uh, um, they were like, they were Christmas personified. Mm -hmm. My grandfather was the one who would wait downstairs and uh, be downstairs early before we got up and who would ring the bell mm -hmm. like it was Santa Claus's bell. And he would ring the bell and we'd hear, ho, 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 boom, the door would slam shut. And we'd just <laughs> run down there and grandpa would be like, you just missed him. You know, you just say, oh. you know, and the cookies would be half eaten and all that stuff. And, and, um, you know, Christmas is a, a season of love. It's a holiday yeah. of love, I, I believe. So, you know, I know that it has religious um, uh, connotations, 
Christmas has religious connotations, but it has secular ones as well. You know, the Christmas tree itself is, you know, right. is a secular connotation of the holiday. Japan, which is less than 1% um, Christian, right? Their majority is, is Shintoism. Mm -hmm. They celebrate Christmas. A lot of Chinese people do too. Yeah, they celebrate Christmas in yeah. Japan. And I mean, they do it up. They do it big time. They have they have giant displays. They have mm -hmm. Santa Claus. They have, I mean, Santa Claus is another, you know, secular um, right. tradition of of christmas um it, you do, you know, the, i love it though when you when in, in church growing up they would always like find ways to kind of like christianify <laughs> santa claus and things like that like i i can't remember what they would do but in like sunday school you would have like the peppermint would be like you know the staff oh, the shepherd yeah, right, staff right. And, and all that kind of stuff so they would you know, they would christianify like the pagan traditions and stuff well i mean and it, and you know saint nick so there is Satan there are, Nick, right? So Satan more like Nick. Satan Nick. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so there is, I mean, there is that you know religious background to that mm -hmm. tradition as well. Mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, Thanksgiving was that for me because that used to be the time where you know that my grandmother was kind of the glue that held you know all of the extended family together. Mm -hmm. And so when she passed away, you know, we still, there were still a few years where we all came together because my mom was from a family of 16 kids. Mm -hmm. So it's a big family. And, um, you know, but eventually as everybody had their own families and kind of drifted away, you know, we don't have that anymore. And I hate I know, that. I it's hate that sad. too. Like well, after my mom died, because she was the glue that kind of kept our family together. And my mm -hmm. brother lives in Boston yeah. and my sister, you know, she's got uh, my nephew, but they live in Kansas City with my dad and stuff. So we don't necessarily see them all the time. But, you know, when you're a child and you kind of you have like your family, you kind of lock that in stone in your mind mm -hmm. of like that's who your family is. So when they start to like grow up and move away and so start throwing families and you don't hear from them as much and you don't see them as much, you know, maybe not even on they don't even come home for the holidays a lot of a lot of times. Um, and, and then there's, um, you know, the inevitable deaths. Like you just feel this longing, which I think, you know, sort of correlates with the loneliness sure. for, for those times. And it's a, it's a form of nostalgia, right? You know, sure. But I guess, you know, the only thing that really sort of rectifies it and the thing in my mind that sort of gives me, you know, like where I feel a warmth is like the starting of my new family. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really like, I guess the only way to kind of like mollify it to a certain extent, because like, I, you know, you have Friendsgivings. I've had Friendsgivings, right? Mm -hmm. And like, I, I've never, I've always been able to come home for Christmas at least, but like Thanksgiving, sometimes I've had to do it. I, I almost spent a Thanksgiving alone once. Maybe I had like one other person with me once where it was a, like a very lonely one. It is nowhere near, a Friendsgiving is not the same thing, right? right. Be, right. Be, be, and, and when you're at somebody else's house, like their family and stuff like that, you... I mean, as, as much as you enjoy it and appreciate it and you're grateful to be welcomed into people's homes, it's just never the same as it is when it's with your family and your loved ones that are that are close to you. So I feel like um, I feel like the loneliness that people feel during the holidays is like it, it is like a sense of of loss. Right. You know, um, and that's why I, like I actually, as I've gotten older, appreciate more and more of the story of the Christmas Carol because of because the. You you know the moral lessons when you're a kid have less impact on you mm -hmm. because you had there really hasn't been much loss right right in your life and and so it takes it takes you know years and years of of experience and life and living and losing to sort of understand the predicament that Ebenezer Scrooge has placed himself into and it, it's it's a it's a cautionary tale mm -hmm. right? and, and it's not just like an anti-capitalist greed really it's it's not a it's not even as much about you know Scrooge's money even though you know he obviously loves money more than he loves people but because at one time in his life Ebenezer Scrooge had a family he had love you know and he pushed them all out and he neglected them so it's a cautionary tale and you know not neglecting the people that you love because if you want to to continue throughout your life right to maintain that thread you have to actively work to bring these ties in he had that love interest and i think that's part of christmas is there's the intentionality mm -hmm. of being together and doing those things together consistently year after year mm -hmm. and you know not growing up with it one of the things that from the outside looking in that i kind of always saw that made me kind of like oh i don't know mm -hmm. was it also can be a really stressful time of year 
for people. Yes. And so I saw that and I was like, I don't know about that. But, you know, with, with the girls and I, it's a lot of the traditions and kind of the fun things and the doing that together. And we do it how we want to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, we pick the parts that, you know, we enjoy mm -hmm. and that's what we do. Also, like, so you didn't celebrate Christmas, like in like the traditional sense growing up. And right. then, but what was interesting was that like your daughters were sort of called to it in a way. Right. So to tell that story, because I think that's really interesting. Well, you, I mean, as far as. I think that they weren't used to the idea at first because I was like, you know, do you, this is like, we can do this if you want to. Yeah. yeah and it's kind of like, you're all like, well, it's what's the word trepidatious, right? You're all just kind of like, what you first, oh, we're going to do Christmas. Do, is it okay to admit that we want to do this, this right. Christmas thing? You know, and my, what was it last year was your first it year? It was last year that, you know, I did a little bit for him uh, three years ago, but then last year, uh, Anna Rosa was like, we're doing this. And Anna Rosa loves to, you know, give gifts and be creative and decorate. And like every year that like this, and she's like, all out <laughs> she's all in <laughs> yeah because it's it is fun and it's you know it, it can it's an inclusive holiday to a large extent and right? it surprised That's... me because like last year at the last minute they were i can't remember which one of them brought it up but they wanted to do matching pajamas That's i awesome. never expected that that's funny <laughs> Uh, buddy Mansoor over on the YouTube live stream this morning. Good morning, buddy. Says, I'm a Scrooge and I hate myself. Oh. <laughs> Yikes. Um, somebody said, uh, when I stopped giving gifts at Christmas, I enjoy it more. Yeah, I guess, you know, I feel guilty. I don't think I would be able to do that and not give gifts. That is the part, the pressure for people to do that. Mm -hmm. That's the part, I guess, that I don't like as much. It's fun because we it. love giving gifts. Yeah. I mean, that's like, you know, that's kind of part of my love language is like acts gifting. of service and gifting and doing things yeah. for people. But I can understand, you know, not liking the pressure. I'm also much more of a, like a spontaneous gift giver. Mm. I like to do it like just when I think about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so now this year whenever i asked the girls i was like so are we doing uh matching pajamas again there was the immediate yes so we're doing matching pajamas again that, that's adorable <laughs> if if you want to text the show you can today at 573-319-1586 one of our listeners texted in this morning is saying that the major res um, issue with this respect for marriage uh, act is the possibility of going after churches 501c3 status who don't defend gay marriage yeah, I know that that's been the primary concern that I've seen brought up is that, well, and there are there were protections written into that. There was an amendment made that I think did that. A lot of people felt it didn't go far enough and that it wouldn't. You're talking about the Mike Lee amendment? It didn't get included. Yes, but no, there was another amendment too. Mike Lee did not like the amendment that did get put on there because he felt it wasn't strong enough. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think their concern is that it's not going to protect, for example, like the, the private business owner. It right. protects the churches, the nonprofit. Fits, but maybe not the private business owner. Well, I mean, the 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 fact of the matter is, is that is that the private business owner is not protected because of the Civil Rights Act, and you know they're going to, like the judge was explaining yesterday, you know they could say sex could correspond to gender, and so they the the Supreme Court justices could uh, extend the protections of the Civil Rights Act to uh, gender orientation or sexuality because of the sex portion of the you know Thou shalt not discriminate clause of Title II of, of uh, the Civil Rights Act of 1964. That confused me a little bit, I'll be honest, because when he when he said that like that, because it was it feels like we're conflating gender the two and sex. Yes, that yeah. threw me off a little. Most people don't kind of understand the difference, right? Because if you if in a vacuum you say to like a conservative that like gender is a construct, they'll be like, no, right? But it you know it's if you understand it, sex is like a fixed is a fixed biological condition right uh but gender is how we define it right so gender is how we define male and female sex is the literal chromosomal right scientific definition thereof and then we say well the gender is what we assign to the sex right male or female or you know in some very rare cases hermaphroditic right so um well, and then if it's the act with mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, men and women or, you know, if whether it's homosexual or straight, mm -hmm. that's that's another entirely different thing. Yes, yes. You can text the show today at 573-319-1586. Dustin over there in the live stream this morning says, stop speaking for us, please. I don't know if that's a joke or what you're in reference to there. 
Um, Elizabeth Press says, throw out all civil rights laws. We all have the exact same rights. Well, the only problem with that was that the Civil Rights Acts, you know, stopped the government from discriminating. It, it Because there was official government discrimination in the South. And it's not... Um, I mean, I know people say jokingly and ironically when it comes to interracial marriages, but there are people in the United States who think that the interracial marriage itself is a sin and, oh, sure. you know, we're probably more than happy, you know, I don't, I don't care how much of a minority it is, right? There are people who probably think that it shouldn't be legal for blacks and whites to get married, right? And it, it doesn't matter if, if it's not, if it's 99% of people don't agree with that. If you know, the fact that 1% do, you know, you have to stop tyranny before it starts. Right. In the government opinion. doesn't have rights. It's fine to restrict yes. what the government can do. We do. And, you know, even if you're an idiot, you yeah. know, you have the right to be an idiot. Yes, you do have a right, an absolute right to be a moron in this country. Uh, you can text the show today at 573-319-1586. That listener um, went on to say the major issue is that them going after the 501c3 status. Okay, so why is that wrong? So, so I'm going to, you know, uh, as the person, by the way, let me preface this by saying that I defended the right of the Christian Baker, quite famously so. If you missed my debates in 2016 when I ran for president, Gary Johnson, I don't think anybody should be forced to bake the cake. But I like to play devil's advocate and I like to – it is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without – consider a thought without accepting it. Yeah. But the but why should churches get a special nonprofit tax-exempt status if they're not – if they're they're openly antagonistic to doing good works for the community, the whole point of having this five hundred one c three nonprofit status, right, that they don't have to pay taxes, is because churches are supposed to be, you know, co doing community service. And so, if you're openly antagonistic or hostile to the community, and you don't want and you and you don't want to serve some people in the community, you know, why are you getting a tax exempt? Why are you getting a tax break for that? Right, you could just operate like any other corporation. I've been conflicted yeah. about this because I, I see that and I'm like, you know, they there shouldn't be that special. Right? But at the same time, what? there is churches are the reality is, is that churches are largely responsible for uh, the philanthropy that takes place Absolutely. in our world. A large majority of it, much more so than government, I would say. But, you know, but we all have to pay taxes. Right. So, right. you know, let's talk about being equally yoked, for example. <laughs> Yes. You know, but I mean, again, the the only the the only really good argument that I had that I can say as a libertarian and, and as a, somebody who's secular, who's you know pretty antagonistic to um, organized religion myself, uh, the only good argument that I have for churches getting uh, uh, nonprofit status is because I know that the tax dollars will be used for evil, right? It's sort of like funding my enemy, right? I I don't I think that you know reducing the amount of funding and revenue that goes to the government is is probably a good thing right. right well and you know politicians have always used this you know just whenever they see fit because there's supposed to be this separation but you know where do the politicians go to exactly. reach their audiences? They go to the church. They yeah, want to be true. in that pulpit but then they don't necessarily want pastors to be telling people who they like or who they should vote for or anything like that. Um, See, that but, brings up know. a good question is like if if a church is openly political and telling people who to vote for, like, you know, some liberals are like, well, that's why you should revoke their tax exempt status is because they're, you know. It's the liberals who are going in and going to all the churches. Did you, the politicians. did you hear my question with the judge where I was talking about like the separation of church and state in Japan with Shintoism? Mm -hmm. Just because I'm watching all these Japanese videos and history and stuff because we're going there that I, that it's on my mind. But, uh, you know, after World War II, the, you know, the Yasukuni shrine was the war, the war shrine. And it, 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 they had an official state religion, right? And, you know, the it, it's complicated when it's another country forcing right. their view of, of government on there. But it's like, I do find a lot of irony that it, after World War II, that we literally demanded that they separate their church and state, you know, and, and that here in the United States, we have people who are, you know, call themselves self-avowed Christian nationalists who are like, there's no separation of church and state. That's not in the Constitution. And it's like, we need to have a Christian government and all this kind of stuff. And it's just kind of like, I find that irony there, that, that irony that after World War II, that we were like, we were, we were forcing what we considered to be American values right. on the Japanese. I actually did not know that before you talked about that. I didn't know it right. until like last week either. I had no, I had no uh, idea that that was the case, but yeah, um, uh, in order for, because 
What we had realized was that one of the main reasons why Japanese imperialism had become so virulent and was so dangerous was because their religion was their official religion was the government, and, and uh, the the emperor was the living god. He was a living deity on earth, and so in order for Japan to have a Western style society, we had to divorce by force their church and state. So their their temple, their religion is Shintoism, and so in order for um, us to separate it, we we um, they had to create a religious corporation mm. uh, of Shintoism in order for them to keep their shrines, because if they hadn't, then the Americans said, "We will burn on these all of these shrines to the ground if you do not separate church and state." Imagine, imagine that here in the United States today, right? We will burn these churches down if you do not stay out of government. It's it's isn't that amazing? How much things have changed, and okay. and people wonder like when those when this started to change. When did we put like in God we trust on our money and things like that? You know all that stuff, all of like the 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 rise of like Christian nationalism and like you know the the desire not to separate church and state. That really started in the 1950s. Um, it wasn't until the 1950s that we put in God we trust on our money and all these kinds of things. This is what people think is tradition, yeah. right? It, their traditions only go back to the 1950s. Because before the 1950s, you didn't have in God we trust in our money. You know, we had people like Benjamin Franklin who put, you know, mind your business on, <laughs> on money. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> and, and so, and, and but it was because of godless communism. It was because of the the Cold War and the threat of atheistic communism from, you know, Stalin and Khrushchev and the, the threat of the Cold War. And of course, you know, every government needs an enemy. And so since the Soviets were the enemy and they were largely atheist and, you know, um, America was a majority Christian nation, you know, the, the use of religion and government, the desire to kind of like, you know, to, to be an explicitly Christian nation was propagandized in order to set us apart from our enemies, which were, you know, the atheistic Soviets. And I think that, you know, when you think about that, the 50s, that's where a lot of our ideals of what America looks like, you know, still come from, you know, the the ideal family, you know, the ideal, you know, wife and mother are all those images that we see from the TV shows and the ads mm -hmm. um, and the commercials from the 50s. Mm. And real life was actually probably not like that. Yeah. Yes, uh, let's see. And if you, uh, R. Volt this morning, who's in the live stream, says, if you tax charities, less charity will be available. People will donate less. Government will have to increase welfare, which increases taxes. That's a really good point. Well, we use tax uh, breaks to incentivize, you know, things all the time. Mm -hmm. That's even done with school choice issues. You know, we right now, Missouri has um, empowerment scholarship accounts where you get a tax break if you contribute to the scholarship funds for kids to go to school wherever they need to go to school. Mm -hmm. You can text the show today at 573-319-1586. You can also send a super chat if you'd like to have your chat read on the show this morning. If it's your first time watching the Wake Up America show, you can uh, make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification icon so that you can know when we're going live, which of course is Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Uh, Dustin says this morning that no, George Washington talked about God a lot more and our founding fathers most love the Lord. I wouldn't, you know, I'm not disagreeing with that. No, sure. I mean, of course they did. Mm -hmm. Cecilia says, I believe the separation of church and state was based more upon not having a government run church and that sure. people have the right to choose their religion. Very true. Um, uh, to a certain extent, right? There's, there's also a little bit more to that context. I would read Jefferson's letter to the Danbury Baptists and stuff where he talks about that because it, it's it's a one-page read. It's easy. Um, Tolly Owen says that the separation of church and state is to re restrain, refrain government from controlling the people, not to restrain people from influencing, influencing the government. I get that. But I mean, at what point does it go too far, right? I guess my question is, is for people who make these kinds of arguments is like, at, at what point would you say that it's gone too far? Like, so for example, the Taliban, uh, they have, they, they believe in a theocracy or Iran, like they believe in a the theocracy. So there's, they, they could make the exact same argument, right? Well, it's like, we're just people influencing the government, right? We're just, you know, we're the mullahs and we, we just happen to rule you and we just happen to live under 
what would you call it? Um, what is it? Uh, Islamic law, but they call it Sharia. Sharia yeah. yeah, we just happen to live under Sharia law. I mean, you know, if you ask Christians, you know, should we live under the law? Should the law be the Bible in the United States? Probably how much, what percentage of them would say yes? Well, the problem with legislating morality yeah. is that eventually somebody else is in power mm -hmm. that has a different standard of morality than yours. Tolly says we'd be a different country if there had been zero Judeo-Christian influence, but would it be a worse country? I think because the problem is, is always that it begs the question and that it's like the premise is all, it, the premise is, well, obviously the country is better because it has the, the Judeo-Christian influence, but what if it was more Judeo and less Christian? Would the country be better off if it were more Jewish than Christian? There'd be a lot less people knocking on our effing doors on Saturday mornings. <laughs> oh, Chris Morrill, all this holy war talk, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so Kenneth Slayer makes a good point here, and I think it does bear repeating. All legislation legislates morality. So, you know, it's kind of a fallacy, I think. And libertarians, I think, Fair. do get in trouble to yes. say, oh, you can't legislate morality. Well, how about this? You can't ne legislate your your narrow worldview, right? We can, necessary, we can necessarily legislate a broad view of morality, you know, things that are commonly understood to be immoral, such as murder and theft and rape and all that stuff. But um, yeah, that, that is a much deeper dive to, right, to, right. to, to discuss what constitutes morality. Right, right. <laughs> But when you start like talking about like Deuteronomy and like looking at thou shalt stone a rebellious son and kill him, at that point in time, it's kind of like, eh, you know, the Judeo-Christian law on that one might be, let's, let's, let's just move us let's, you know, let's go with a, a secular humanist law on that one, which is, no, you can't murder your son because he speaks back to you and stuff like that. Yeah. I had a shirt that I wore in college that I got from my, I wore it ironically, but my cousins and my uncle who gave it to me, they they made it non-ironically, unironically. Like they're, they're your stereotypical, like conservative, like Christian rednecks from Missouri. It, it, do you know, have I showed you this shirt? Yes. You know which one it is. Which one is it? It's trying to remember. I'm sitting here trying to remember what it says. It has to do with women. Yes. I can't remember what it said now. Uh, it says women are property. Oh, that's right. Chattels. Chattels. No. <laughs> Oh my God, I used to wear that shirt in college and just slay. I mean, <laughs> uh, so like, uh, this is going to be really, a uh, really weird tangent. So when I was in, um, like, uh, I graduated my senior year, I'd had my heart broken. I got like cheated on high school from like the girlfriend that I loved and she broke my heart and it's like, oh, it's so terrible. But uh, I had that shirt, Women of Property. I remember I went to like a summer camp or something like that. And I and I was like, I'm, me and my buddies were like, we're going to do this total experiment where we're just total dicks to girls for the whole week. <laughs> just a last hole. And it was like night or day. It was like all of a sudden, wow, all the ladies wanted us. I was like, oh, man. And I have to say, I really lost respect for your gender that week. I'm sorry. I don't know what's wrong with them. You love assholes. <laughs> Just be honest. You love assholes. There is something about a jerk that is something somewhat attractive, Camelia. Let's be honest. Uh, well, you know, they've always said that women like bad boys. Is that uh, what it is? It's just they're bad boys? Yeah, I don't know. What about a, a man who puts you in your place? Is that what it is? You love it. You love it. Oh, yes, we are. Yes, we Emotional are. damage. All right, maybe we should. We need to talk to the 3D print guy. How about that? Should That's we, a good idea. We go Great idea. Things? Just as Camellia was starting to squirm. Oh, this is not a Christmas song. All right. I'm pretty sure I've chased off all my fans and followers with that one. All right, there's 50 people watching. Good God. Okay, maybe not. But they like to watch her. They like to watch Camellia squirm. All right, when we get back, the 3D print general. We're going to talk about printing guns. We'll be back with more. Uh, Ann Harry says, yes, I dated a bad boy, then I got smart. Yeah, but he can't do for you what us bad boys can do. We'll be back with more on the Wake Up America show at wakeupamericashow.com.
My name is Kelvin. Welcome to Frenchy Bullshit. This is my Didi's website. Now I've decided to speak to you with my real voice for the first time ever to tell you about how cool Frenchy Bullshit is. But I've decided that this is the perfect opportunity to share with you. Frenchy Bullshit is a good website. You should follow us on socials. If you like Frenchies or any kind of bulldogs, me and my new brother George are going to try to make your life more fun. Hello, I'm George. My neck isn't really thick yet, but it will be. We are so glad you're here. Please ignore my floating eyeball. It helps me spot predators who might be approaching from the sides. Dee Dee made Fringy Bullshit to review things that he uses on me and my brother to tell you if it's good or bullshit. Take this collar, for example. Dee Dee really likes it. Dee Dee said it's really handy because us Fringies got thick necks. Need something really tough. People think Fringies are little, but if you look at us from below, you can see we are really pretty buff. Mmm, beefcake. Yes. Look at my creamy thighs and chest. Yes. You like that? Big brother, please focus. Frenchy Bulls. Please follow us for more great content and read the Frenchy Bulls blog for more fun and cool stuff. I'm a public defender. I am a public defender. I'm proud to be a public defender. 80% of Americans accused of a crime will get appointed a public defender. Everybody from a speeding ticket to capital murder. For every dollar we spend on public defenders, we spend $3 on prosecutors. Public defenders have to do pretty much everything on their own. Social workers, counselors. Investigating is another piece of it. The average public defender holds 300 cases annually. You never feel like there's enough time. Public defenders have health issues all the time. A lot of people People give up and say, I can't do this work anymore. Gideon's Promise trains, mentors, and supports public defenders. There are a lot of people who say that they would not still be public defenders, but for Gideon's Promise. It's fueled me to continue on in this fight. Gideon's Promise has changed the face of public defense. People see us as troublemakers. <laughs> Good trouble, only. We don't make it easy. It should not be easy to take away someone's liberty. Ever hear the one about the frog? Put a frog in a pot of boiling water and it'll jump right out. Here's my resume again. But put a frog in a pot of cool water and slowly heat it up and that frog will boil. It's a lie. But as a metaphor for us and all that we go through as veterans, you have any real world experience. It's a story that rings true. We make excuses for how we feel. We push everything down. We tell ourselves the lie that it's easier to stay in that boiling water. To disconnect. And some days, maybe, it is. But you've never been interested in easy. Make no mistake, reaching out is hard. Do it anyway. You're not alone. You've got this. You are not a frog. Find resources at va.gov slash reach. Good morning, Rise and Freedom. It's 831. You're watching and listening to the Wake Up America show at wakeupamericashow.com. All right, enough of that atheistic nonsense. Nonsense. And all of that secular Christmas stuff. We say Merry Christmas here today. Camelia Peterson still joining me live in the studio. Nice to see you, CJ. Good morning. Good morning. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Uh, you can say all you want. You're still going to hell. All right, so my next guest, his first time making an appearance on the program, is the 3D Print General. He's here to talk about 
you're getting coal in your stockade. No, maybe a nice, beautiful, black 3D printed gun. His name is Sean Aranda, and he's joining us right now. Good morning, Sean. Merry Christmas to you, sir. Merry Christmas, Austin. Uh, I've been following you since your failed presidential run. So, Oh, that's so great. <laughs> That's right. I've had I've had many failed runs since then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, glad to have you here, Sean, and uh, thanks for reaching out. I was excited when you said you wanted to be on the Wake Up America show to talk a little bit about like ghost guns and kind of where the market's at. I can see you've got um, a three D printer behind you there. Um, I guess tell us a little bit about a, a bit about your background. I mean, you've kind of built a pretty strong following online for being a three D gun printer. Tell us about life as an outlaw. <laughs> yeah, well, I started my channel uh, about 3D printing just because I wanted to, and there was nothing gun related for probably the first four or five years. I had my channel, and then I met some of the gun guys. I wanted to know where we are now because, you know, I grew up in Southern California, and I wasn't allowed to print them, and I moved to Texas, and I'm like, oh, let's, let's get into this now, and I had no idea how far the movement had come since Cody Wilson's Liberator. I mean, it is very, a very drastically different scene now. And I love it. And ever since then, I've just kind of been printing them nonstop. I got about six of them behind me on the screen now, and I've made 15, 16 of them and just can't stop now. It's a new, new crave. So, yeah, that's whenever I talk to people about printers, especially because it's probably because the people that I hang out with, they're always like, oh, can you make any guns? And uh, I guess my thing is with, with making guns is like I've tried, I've attempted it. But the problem is, is that. I don't know if I want to trust my life with something that I made necessarily. And maybe that's just me, but I mean, like how confident are you in the, the firearms that you're printing? I mean, would you trust your life with it? Or I mean, would you rather have like a SIG? Uh, well, to be honest, yes, I would rather have um, a SIG. I actually have, that's, that's my main home defense gun, but uh, it, it's, it's one of those things where, we need to continue advancing this just in case ATF, you know, with a stroke of the pen can completely change everything. And it is nice to know all of these guns are not registered with the government at all. And yes, I put my face on these things. So I'm in a little bit of a unique position, but you can be anonymous and do this. And all of the guns that I have, I've shot, I've tested, I have videos of myself shooting them. So they all work great. But yes, at the you know end of days, I would rather trust my sick. For sure. But I mean, it, it one of the benefits of being able to make your own is that if Joe Biden decides to crack down on us, then they really can't stop the signal in the sense like we, we are now kept fully capable of making these things. The only limitations is that, you know, there are still some parts that need to be made out of steel. There are still some parts that, you know, like the barrel, for example, still needs to be made out of steel. You can almost entirely print. I mean, you can print fully print some 3d guns right but they're they don't have they, they you can't use the kind of explosive ammunition that we're used to right i mean you know well, you that, still, that's you actually to, go ahead uh, i was gonna say that's actually the area i'm most excited about because i have a lot of printed lowers like locks ar-15s those are fun and great but like you said you still need to buy all of the upper and barrel and all of that stuff you still need to buy from the manufacturer and a stroke of the pen and next thing you know those are regulated so the things that really excite me are the hybrid and the fully printed ones. Um, the FGC-9, I'm sure you probably have heard that name. Um, that, that was created by JSTAR back in, we're on a second revision now. I have two of them behind me, and that is fully made at home, everything, including the barrel. They figured out a way to what's called ECM rifling, which is electrochemical machining. You literally 3D print the rifling. You stick it into a, a, a bare steel tube and you run uh, salt water through it and it erodes the rifling and you could just do it in your bathtub with you know a hundred dollars worth of home depot parts and that was the number one thing that everybody was saying the barrel the barrel and that shoots nine millimeter perfectly fine i i put you know 200 rounds through mine and that's really exciting and then the other even more exciting in my opinion is there's this creator named Suckboy tony strange name but that's his username he um so suck boy tony suck boy tony yes <laughs> i think he regretted making that name and he's stuck with it now but um he is making a fully 3d printed gun that uses electrically ignited black powder homemade ammo so oh, that's freaking awesome <laughs> that's wild from scratch to it's literally a button the trigger is a button and it electrically ignites uh this caseless ammo that he makes he makes at home 
the the barrel is actually 3D printed, just reinforced with the steel tube around it. And since it's black powder instead of gunpowder, it burns a little slower or uh, more evenly. And so the pressure, the 3D prints can handle the pressure. So that's what I'm really excited about. You're just tuning in to the Wake Up America show with Austin Peterson. I am joined in studio by Camelia Peterson, and we are now uh, also joined live on camera by a man who's called the 3D Print General, Sean Aranda, joining us to talk a little bit about uh, 3D printed guns and the 3D printed industry. Now, you don't sell anything, right? It's there, there are laws and regulations against you transferring those firearms. I guess, as I understand it, and Sean, maybe you can help clarify this for me with the law, essentially, is that you can make 3D printed ghost guns for yourself, right? As long as you don't have any intention of giving them to anyone else or transferring them to anyone else when you make it. However, three, four, five, six, seven years from now, if in the future you wanted to transfer that firearm to someone else, that would be legal. Is that correct or not? I believe that is correct. I still wouldn't gamble with it. Um, because you never know what they're going to say. That was your intent to begin with. But yes, that is how I understand it. It is fully legal to make it for yourself. You cannot transfer it, transfer it in any way, give it away, sell it or anything like that. And so we actually get a lot of what we, you know, undercover feds, we call them, who always try to ask us, will you sell me a Glock frame? Will you sell me a Glock frame? Absolutely yeah. do not do it. Yeah. And, um, but there are certain limitations in other states. Like I was originally from California. You can't do it there. You'd have to request a serial number. So it kind of defeats the whole purpose. Obviously, then places like New York and Chicago, you can't do it. But the majority of America, yes, that is the, the case. Uh, well, that's interesting. Um, I've seen, Camelia, I've seen like videos of people 3D printing like little rail guns mm. or like magnetic, magnetic guns that you can make. There's There's so many different ways. I mean, it's just how you define a gun that you can make devices that, you know, fulfill the purpose of a gun, but don't have, you know, aren't the exact same kind of what you would, you know, uh, uh, carry on a daily basis. There are a lot of other types of guns that you can make other than just like your traditional rifles and glocks and stuff, right? I believe so. Uh, there's actually a whole airsoft movement in uh, Japan that are copying all of our designs, but they can't have real guns. So they are literally the exact yeah. same design, yeah. but they made it for... Uh, airsoft bb guns so for those of us who don't know a whole lot about you know 3d printing like how how accurate how consistent you know how many times i mean can you shoot them before they explode right <laughs> <laughs> well so uh, exploding actually i don't they i don't really see catastrophic failures what you end up seeing will it'll eventually crack and then you kind of just say okay i'll print a new one but uh, it depends on the material you use and make and if you're following the instructions, you always got to follow the instructions, do exactly what they say for all of the files. Um, don't try to do your own thing. But uh, we use what's called PLA Pro or PLA Plus, which is um, basically the second cheapest material there is really easy to print. And it's actually surprisingly strong. And my the firearms I build, they are all they can easily last a thousand rounds before cracking, and sometimes even more. There are people who've put you know five thousand rounds through theirs with no issue. So yeah, definitely depends on the material. There are stronger materials as well. If you're just tuning in to the Wake Up America show, I'm speaking to Sean Aranda. He is a uh, the 3D print general online. We're talking about 3D printing, mostly guns. But there's a lot of other like uses for 3D printers. I mean, you 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 do you use it for more than just making guns? Well, it's funny you say that because um, now that I print guns, I kind of look back at the first five years of my channel and I go, "What was I making before?" But because I just that's kind of mostly what I do now. But yeah, no, there's a lot of stuff around the house that I make. Just if I we decide we need something, I don't want to spend twenty bucks on Amazon. Uh, before this, though, I had a job working at a print farm, and we worked with a lot of clients who needed unique electrical enclosures, inventors who wanted to see their product before they go to production and uh, just other random one-off projects. Yeah, no, I, I use it for stuff around my house as well. So like, you know, if, if I'm not printing guns and I'm printing like wall hangers for my guns. Soap holders. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh yeah, that's Drink right. Soap I made a soap holder for a camellia, you know, with little drains on the side. And somebody, Dustin over in the live stream is asking how much uh, a 3D printer costs. You want to kind of give us a little bit of a, of a price range for what the, one of these printers costs? Yeah, there's a wide range. And what's great about this community is they design all of these guns 
to work on the cheapest printer possible. That's their goal. Their goal is to you know spread this among the masses as, as much as possible. So these firearms are, you can print them on an Ender 3, which is the most common inexpensive machine. And you can find coupons to get them for a hundred bucks. Uh, they probably are closer to 180 to 200 if you were to just randomly find it online. Those, that's the number one thing that people are printing these firearms on. But, you know, there are obviously upgrades you might want to end up doing. It's, it's slower. It has more likelihood that it might fail. So you can get all the way up to, you know, my favorite printer is actually um, $1,000. And that's called the Bamboo Lab printer. And that just has all the nifty things and it prints five times faster. And it's like closed you know. is, yeah, it's like, a, it's got like an enclosure and all that stuff. I've seen that, that bamboo labs one that you're talking about. Um, the, I, I almost bought one, but they're just, they're sold out. Like they, they don't like, I'm pretty sure they don't have any that are available on the market right now. But if somebody's like wanting to get in at an entry level, the Ender 3 Pro with that hundred dollar off coupon from Micro Center is the way to go. Cause it's very expensive. And then it's like, you know the materials it costs like 20 bucks for a spool of of filament which is like the plastic that you use for injection molding and stuff it's you know it's fun it's a nice hobby i've 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 been making a nice little uh bit of business some cash by um cutting off the heads of buddhas and um replacing them with like donald trump and putting like making like donald trump buddhas which have done a nice bit of business so so anyways yeah for some reason people like seeing president's head on buddha dolls but uh <laughs> Anyways, uh, Sean, you are the 3D print general online. Uh, what is there anything else that you'd like to share with our listeners, um, um, you know, based on what it is that you're doing before we let you go? Sure. Um, yeah, so 3D print general, that's only 3D printing content because YouTube ended up getting after me for my 3D printed gun stuff. So I moved all that over to the 3D Pew general. I just created so that they're separated and I don't lose my 100,000 <laughs> subscriber channel. And uh, so if you want to see 3D printed guns, it's the 3D Pew General. And then other than that, you know, I do have a book called 3D Printing Failures. If anybody wants to get into that, uh, it gets into the hobby. It really, I try to outline the failures you may occur and how to fix them. And finally, if you want to really get into this specific hobby, I would suggest checking out Control Pew, C-N-T-R-L-P-E-W. He's the main guy and he has a whole guide to getting started. Hi, Sean Aranda, the 3D Print General. We appreciate you very much. Hey, Sean, thanks so much for coming on the show today. Thank you, Austin. Thank you very much. That's the 3D Print General. Yeah, pretty interesting guy, huh? Yeah, yeah I like that interview. What did you think about Sean? Send us a text at 573-319-1586. That's 573-319-1586. We got one more segment to go. What are we going to talk about? Uh, are you looking at yourself on the camera on the YouTube? No. Oh, what are you doing? Well, I'm wondering which one we're going to do. Oh. I know what you have on the list. Oh, now I remember. We're going we're gonna to play a little game. Let's play a little game. What do we get back? I'm going to make Camellia. I'm going to embarrass Camellia like I usually do, but we're going to test her knowledge and see how smart she really is. Glasses betray adultish perception. Yes. Jose Palacios, just subscribe to the channel. Welcome, Jose. Thank you so much for subscribing. Give us a little Christmas present. Subscribe. Join the Freedom Ninjas. Get, get emojis and you get 20% off the AP for Liberty shop. Yeah, we'll be back with more on the Wake Up America show at wakeupamericashow.com. Were you exposed to hazardous materials while serving in the military and have an illness or condition as a result? If so, you may be eligible for VA benefits and services. Whether you need health care or want to file a disability compensation claim related to military exposures, VA is here to help. Visit va.gov forward slash military dash exposures to learn more and apply today. wasn't going to be somebody who was a fiery champion of liberty, somebody who would who would get out there and who would be aggressive. And if they wouldn't do it with more fire or passion than I had, then I would go and I would fight this battle for us. I fought for the principles that we all share. Parties tend to be secondary to me. We're here because we believe in the principles of liberty. 
I am not a perfect messenger, but I think I'm a damn good one. This is a replica of our first president's flintlock pistol. You have my full support, my respect, and my gun. I think that that the heart of my philosophy is much more libertarianism than uh, than uh, well, that's the fashionable word these days, I guess. Liber- a conservative is no longer just that; he's a libertarian, and always has been. Yet, any time you and I question the schemes of the do-gooders, we're denounced as being against their humanitarian goals. They say we're always against things; we're never for anything. fascist. Fascism is private ownership, private enterprise, but total government control and regulation. Well, the trouble with our liberal friends is not that they're ignorant. It's just that they know so much that isn't so. We lose freedom here. There's no place to escape to. This is the last stand on earth. This is the issue of this election. Whether we believe in our capacity for self-government or whether we abandon the American Revolution and confess that a little intellectual elite in a far distant capital can plan our lives for us better than we can plan them ourselves. Conservative, so-called, is the one that says, less government, get off my back, get out of my pocket, and let me have more control of my own destiny. on the other end to respond. What if there was no 911? You can be a part of the solution. Anybody can be a firefighter. Male, female, younger, older. We are school teachers. We are leaders in business. It's me, you, anyone that wants to be. There is no typical firefighter. We wish you a freedom Christmas. We wish you a freedom Christmas. We wish you a freedom Christmas and a Liberty New Year. Socialists and commies may try to convince you that the holiday is all about free stuff. But let's be honest. We all know whose wallet Santa's gifts are coming out of. There ain't no such thing as a free stocking. (laughs) Santa is the only guy with a big white beard promising free stuff that we want anything to do with this holiday. And if you don't believe, you don't really receive. It's a capitalist consumerist holiday, and it's time for a Santa-sized stimulus. Get your free market merch at the AP for Liberty shop today, and stuff your socialist sister's stockings full of capitalist cheer. Ho, 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 ho. Good morning, it's 8.50. I'm Austin Peterson. You're watching and listening to the Wake Up America Show at wakeupamericashow.com. We are still joined in studio by the lovely Camelia Peterson. Nice to see you, Camelia. Thank you so much for sticking around. All right, so you were a little nervous about what topic we were going to talk about here. And I would just like to say, by the way, if you're not over in the YouTube uh, chat, things are getting a little uh, spicy. That's reading that. Somebody apparently who is like a part of, like writes erotic fiction. And then somebody else says that they write adult fiction. Erotica, me too. I write adult Minecraft fiction. Very funny. I don't know about that. They said get get their help people get their blocks off. That's very funny. I mean, look at how they are shaped. The erotica writes itself. Um, I don't want to think about Minecraft that way. Okay. Well, let's think about something else. Men 
told they will get laid more if they do the dishes. Still can't seem to do the dishes. Did you read this? Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> A trio of scientists recently interviewed 706 women who cohabitated with their male partners. They found that when men don't do chores around the house, women are far less likely to want to have sex with them. Women who reported that they performed a large proportion of household labor relative to the partner were significantly more likely to receive their part, perceive their partners as dependent on them to keep the household functioning. And this in turn was associated with significantly lower desire for their partner. So maybe it's really just more about the fact that they don't like a man that they feel needs them. Maybe. I mean, there's some merit to that. Yeah, there you go. Uh, but they found out that uh, even though that research, like when men were compared with that research, they still didn't want to do the dishes. Although, you know, yesterday evening, Steffi was like, you know, Austin started cooking more. <laughs> I did. Yes. But I think she liked that. She does, but I'm a, I'm a good cook. So, you That's know, true. yeah. And I kind of like cooking. All right. So we're going to play a game here, uh, Camelia, before we go. This is um, a story that I found yesterday. Smart synonyms that you should be using. So let's do a little cinnamon roll, synonym roll. <laughs> okay. And uh, I'm going to say the synonym for a word and and you're going to see if you can guess what it means what the word what the word is well essentially i'll I'll say the word and then you see if you can define it okay uh you didn't cheat right you didn't read no, these you did not cheat okay good all right good to know. here we go are you ready all right first word is abdominus 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 I have never i've heard a lot of words i've never heard this word abdominus yes and does this have something to do with your abdomen yes actually <laughs> nicely done stomach <laughs> very good yes uh, uh it's a synonym for paunchy you know paunchy interesting means, yes okay right like like me these days Means having a paunchy stomach or a large protruding belly. Like instead of a beer belly, you have an abdominus. You're abdominus. abdominus. Yes. All right. All right. Moving on to the next one. Here we go. Um, Billingsgate. I have no idea. Two Billingsgate. Hours later. Uh, yes, Billingsgate. Um, it was a famous famous fish market in central London. And thanks to the foul language of the people who work there, the name eventually became synonymous with all coarse or abusive language. Interesting. So if you're a Billingsgate, you're using Billingsgate, it means that you uh, use foul language a lot. Instead of bad language, try Billingsgate. Nobody would know what the hell you're okay, saying. Okay, right. Okay. The next one, Cashinate. Cashinate. Yeah. No idea. Okay. I'm failing on this. Yes. It comes from 1824. Uh, it comes from the Latin cashinare, to laugh loudly. It means huh. to laugh or to giggle. Okay. Mimic the sound of boisterous laughter, giggling or guffaw. Guffaw. As I mm. say, uh, it's, it's a little different than guffaw, but it sounds like guffawing. Yes. Or like trying to figure out what, it, you know, how my mind works is uh, daedal. Something's very daedal. I'm sorry. I, I, I That was a terrible, terrible. I was, was like. That was awful. Oh. If we're trying to figure no, out how Austin's to say, mind no. works. You're not going to be able to do it unless you're very daedal. <laughs> oh, well, then uh, perceptive, intuitive, smart. Yes. Skillful. Oh, skillful. <laughs> Daedalus was the architect who built the labyrinth yes. in the ancient myth of the Minotaur. The word daedal is just derived from his name, refers to someone who's especially skilled for artful. So okay. if somebody who's very skillful, skillful, you say daedal. The only problem is, is that people think you're so pretentious when you use big words. So it's like... It's true. Here's a good one, though. I don't like pretentious people sometimes. I do, too, right? Because you realize that they're like, you know, that they've actually read books. Um, how about this one? Embrangle. Embrangle. Mm. Almost sounds like it means embroil. It's, or yeah. it's like, uh, kind of. It's like embroil and entangle together. Kind of, yeah. Embrangle. Yeah, it's like confuse, a synonym for confuse. <laughs> a brangle is a squabble or noisy argument. To embrangle someone is to throw them in a quandary or utterly perplex them. And embrang this happens to me all the time with you. Yes. A tricky, confusing situation <laughs> is an embranglement. Okay. Oh, this one I think I've heard before. Febrile. Fe well, yeah. If you if you have a fever, you are febrile. Correct. If you come down with the flu, nicely done. <laughs> you actually got one there. If you come down with the flu, you might be feeling febrile or feverish. It might only be a febricula, which is a lighter passing fever. 
but nonetheless, you might need a febrifuge, a drug that lowers your temperature. Okay, I that. All right, glittery, not glittery. Glitter. G glittery. Glitter. If something glitters, it does. Well, I like glitter with a T, but. Yeah, I do too. I don't know about the glitter. It's slippery. If something, slippery. if something glitters, it freezes over, which makes something glittery, very slippery as if covered like in glide? ice. glide? So if it's like, yeah. so, okay. Glide, glide, glide. Okay. Yeah, kind of like that. That's a good way to think about it. Uh, next one is horripilation. Don't be such a horripilation. <laughs> <laughs> a horrifying word for a horripilation yes yeah because it's so oh my god i don't it's, know it's so cold in here that i was getting what a boner what is that what you're gonna say what were you gonna say i'm like that's not what usually happens if it's that cold emotional <laughs> damage why are you uh, i have no idea i can't even like associate this with another word horripilation um goosebumps that's, wow. the, that's the medical name for goosebumps. I would have never, yeah, I wouldn't have even come close. There's another way to say goosebumps. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Idonius. Idonius. Mm -hmm. mm. I don't know this one either. Idonius. An old fashioned one. Oh, instead of appropriate, it's a, a synonym for appropriate, derived from the Latin word idonius. Um, appropriate. No, I will never use idonius. Yeah. Uh, how about this one? Jactants. Jacktent? Jacktents. Jacktents. Yes. You hate people who do this. Uh, oh, no. You can't stand it. You were telling me a story about a, somebody, a state rep yesterday. Oh, no. He was displaying <laughs> Jacktents. He was displaying Jacktents. Uh, socially awkward? Oh, I well, don't know. Too. Well, that's <laughs> true. No. Jack tense. Jack tense. Why? Well, I, I don't. Guess. Uh, it's like somebody who's audacious. I don't know. It's like not, audacious is not um, really right no. either, though. I don't think. Uh, I don't know. Two hours later. <laughs> what? It's Jack tense is vainglorious boasting. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. There's yeah. Some vainglorious <laughs> boasting. All right. Uh, instead of. Okay. Ken Speckle. Ken Speckle. Ken Speckle. Is this like henpecked, maybe, or no. or Ken Speckle? Actually, no, uh, no, it means uh, recognizable. Oh, okay. Uh, mephitic. 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 Oh, like gosh, Mephistopheles. Like... Oh, oh, like with a pH. Mephitic. Yeah, pH. Mephitic. Oh, uh, no idea. Instead of smelly, try using mephitic. Right, this noxious, foul-smelling fume. Mephitic. I kind of like that one. What Calvin did to me last yeah. night. Yes. I, I, I know. Okay. Sparser Mephitic. Um, Ebenezer Scrooge is a nip cheese. He's a nip cheese. He's a tight wide. He's a, yeah, it's a miser. Yes. There you go. He's a nip cheese. That damn dark. Yes. There's an obliquate in the road coming up. Obliquate obstacle mm -hmm. pothole a, a bend a bend oh a bend yes. oh, that's whoa okay posiloquent posiloquent no people who like to keep things brief no oh. posiloquent succinct yes I like this one okay. how about this one quiddity quiddity instead of quintessence quintessence yes quiddity. Mm. Mm, I've heard I'm, this one used I'm in a, I'm in a very riant mood today. Riant. Uh, I have no idea. Cheerful. Cheerful. Okay. That's hurry. Not what I was kidding for it's that. 9 a.m. Yeah, we got to hurry. Let's go. Saccadic. <laughs> Saccadic. Uh, rhythmic? No. Cicada is like. It's close. Twitchy. Twitchy. Okay. Turgiversit. I'm sorry, what? Instead of equivocate. And instead of uh, uh, um, something at the moon, you will, uh, uh, a wolf will ululate at the moon. Yes. Okay. Like all you late. Like yes. So likes like yodeling. Ow. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. We've got a couple more to go. Uh, zoyalism. No idea. Zoyalism. Criticism. Criticism. Okay. Yesternight. Yes. Oh, last night. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's hard. Uh, Stick around on the show today. You're going to be on the Austin Peterson Show later today in St. Louis at 2 p.m. Make sure that you tune into that on the Real Talk Radio Network. 
If you haven't liked this video yet, we are not friends. Okay, you've been here all morning to get all this entertainment. You haven't liked the video. We are all, you're off the Christmas card list for next year. Yes, like the video, click subscribe, click the bell notification icon. We'll see you tomorrow. It's uh, Family Friday on the Wake Up America Show at wakeupamericashow.com. shooting things but whenever i can't shoot something i like to cut things my life isn't all about shooting and stabbing and cutting though sometimes i have to do actual work but when i work i still like to have fun and there's nothing less fun than trying to cut with a crappy knife thankfully from the ancient sect of christian knights who also loved cutting and stabbing comes a new implement that has received my personal blessing the templar knife like the ancient sword of excalibur you don't choose a templar knife it chooses you you just decide what kind you want on the website first however and then order it online and then it chooses you the templar knife comes in a variety of shapes as a man of culture and taste, I have decided I will never use a terrible knife again. And thanks to the inspiration provided by this excellent product, I have decided to launch a new crusade against anyone using less than superior knives. Join me, brothers and sisters, by visiting uppercuttactical.com slash pages slash Templar dash knives. That's a lot of slashes. For that, you'll need a Templar knife. For 10% off, use code AP for Liberty and join me in a quest for glory, for liberty, for Christendom, for the Templar knife. Get yours today. Fire. Your printing company stinks. They charge you too much money, and they don't love America enough. We've got the solution. Patriot Printing USA. Whether you're running for office, saving souls, or just need business cards that will get you the new job you've been looking for, Patriot Printing USA has got you covered with the best prices around. Palm cards, brochures, bumper stickers, door hangers, you name it, we've got it. PatriotPrintingUSA.com. That's PatriotPrintingUSA.com. Want an engaging website to boost your business? You're just a click away from five-star fiber talent. Hundreds of freelancer skills like web design. Head to fiber.com today and get something started. foster care i never knew when i would have to move so i always had my suitcase ready to go then one day i was adopted my new parents opened their hearts and home to me my parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning my parents take me on trips i never thought i would go on they gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase my parents aren't perfect but they're perfect for me
It's better to settle these matters in the courts than on the streets. And new laws are needed at every level. But law alone cannot make men see right. 